Why should you use a cloud-based service like AWS instead of building your own data center? That's a great question. I'm glad you asked. First off, it changes your mindset completely on the way that you look at IT. Instead of being resource-based, you can be service-based. Here's what I mean by that. As you get involved in IT projects in the past, you would always have these grand ideas of, we could do this, this, and this, and then it always comes back to, oh, but we've got those five servers, or, oh, we've got that uh, bandwidth limitation, or, uh, well, we're in the United States, so we're going to have a lag when we're reaching customers in XYZ region of the world. You know, you, you always have these resource-based limitations, but now now, those all go away because from Amazon's perspective, or I should say from our perspective, Amazon knows exactly what it is, but there's infinite resources at our disposal from disk space to server uh, scalability to bandwidth amounts. It's all wide open and we just pay for the amount that we use. That completely changes your mind and how you approach IT projects. Second, it's instant, meaning I don't have to wait for shipping times. I don't have to go rack and stack the equipment. I need five servers. I can instantly get them. Matter of fact, I need 500 servers. I can instantly get them. It's all right there available for me. It is a non-commit architecture. I can't tell you how many hundreds of case studies there are now emerging from AWS where things have been possible that just wouldn't be possible from a scalability perspective before. Here's what I mean. You could be a company that comes in, has some, some great idea. You know, I'll, I'll say the, the one in modern culture is a lot of these video streaming to where, you know, you create a video website that streams to the iPhone and iPad and Android and blah, blah, blah. blah. You know, people upload all their kind of stuff and you get a link on Facebook that goes viral and everybody runs after your service. Well, in the traditional IT world, which is very resource-based, you, you better have prepared for that with hundreds of servers that are ready and waiting this amass of people that are coming over from Facebook to your new service. But then you also have to think, okay, well, what happens when that amass slows down? I mean, if you look at just about every everything now that is in the, uh, uh, we'll, we'll call it the viral marketing, you have this like, okay, we launched the service and then bam, you hit that Facebook post or something and your, your demand is off the charts and then it slowly tailors down. Well, in the traditional world, you're buying servers to make sure that you get this level up here. You're guessing because you think that's about what it, what's going to happen. And you get there, you get, receive that customer satisfaction. But as it comes down, you now have all of these resources that are sitting there being wasted or <laughs> I'll probably say the worst one. I don't, I don't know which is worse. You tell me where you bought this amount of server. So all of a sudden you get that Facebook post and you have bam and you have all these dissatisfied customers because your service broke. It was too slow. It couldn't handle all this kind of stuff. So it actually, these are now customers leaving because they, they were uh, dissatisfied with it until it gets back to a reasonable amount. And maybe now you, you know, scramble to go buy more servers and bring your resources up or whatever that you, you see what I mean with AWS. It's a non-commit architecture to where you can scale. And there, this is what I'm saying. There's case studies all over the place to hundreds, thousands of servers all at once, and then dismember them in an automated way. Here's where it gets even better. This is that elastic architecture that AWS is after, is you can expand and contract as the demand comes and goes away automatically. You can have auto scaling set up where it sees this coming and powers on servers and configures them. That's called bootstrapping, configures them on the fly to fit into uh, your organization and then dismembers them once that demand goes away. And you, you don't you don't pay for that it bleeds right into this a pay as you go cost model, because now as as uh, the demand comes up and you're making more money as an organization, hopefully, unless you're just doing all this for free, which isn't isn't out of the uh, ballpark now, uh, but uh, with your organization, you're only paying for what you use. Can I give you a case study straight from the New York Times that helps illustrate this? This is actually from the New York Times itself. They had scans of documents from 1800s all the way to the 1900s that were all stored in TIFF format. I mean, hundreds of thousands of them that are huge and you can't use those uh, on the web effectively. So they said, we've got to convert all of these. And as a matter of fact, look at this, 405,000 TIFF files. We need to convert them into PNG images, which are a lot more web friendly. They went ahead and brought hundreds of AWS machines to the table and did that conversion in less than 36 hours. And I, I know they don't have the price on here, but I heard somewhere, it was somewhere in the range of like $200 that they paid to, to run this massive cluster of AWS servers for 36 hours and then turn them off. I mean, that's, that's the kind of vision that you get with AWS.
Last thing that I'll say is this. Every IT person, they may not show it to you, but inside themselves, they have their own little playing card, you know, like a baseball trading card, where they have all these stats on their skill level in the various areas of IT. You've got programmers, you've got networkers, you've got system admins, da, 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 you know, down and down and it goes. And you have all these people that have these different skill levels. And, oh, man, there's somebody who's really strong in networking. That's his playing card, <laughs> the one-eyed man. Um, but, then, I mean, you've got weaknesses and, and all these other areas. Well, the beauty of AWS is they bring together hundreds of engineers that put together the solution where they have people specializing in the best area. They then automate it to where you click a button and spin up, for instance, a load balancer that would take you weeks, if not months, to perfect. It's take a foundry load balancer to learn that and do it effectively in your own environment. It's a click of a button in the AWS world. Can I wrap up this micro nugget by telling you that I'm not paid by AWS in any way, shape, or form. I'm just telling you it makes sense. So with all that being said, there is a lot more AWS training over at cbtnuggets.com. My name is Jeremy Chara. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.